Welcome, everybody, to the Why Is This a Cartoon cast. I'm your host, Joey. With me is Tim. Arr. And Chris. Hello. <laughs> this is the pilot episode, which means you haven't heard us before. So what we do here is we take a look at animated adaptations and ask the essential question, why is this a cartoon? And guys, I think we started off with the best one, so it might be downhill from here. Yeah. We're talking about Hammer Man from 1991, starring everybody's favorite pop rapper, MC Hammer. Yeah, that was the guy with the fake nose, right? Just right off the bat, I have to say this is the best cartoon we've watched so far from this oh my program. God. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> right? Did you finish the episode yet? Yeah, I finished. Yeah. I watched I watched three quarters of the way through it a second time. Wow. Tim watched half the episode <laughs> in the second tab in his browser. <laughs> and he, and he, he, he assumes he's going to wing it. So. <laughs> he, he came very prepared to the podcast. Oh, my God. Well, I can still remember it from when I was a kid. Tim, what do you know about MC Hammer? Well, he was a rapper. Well, he was a he was a rapper, and he wore pants that could be also be used as just a quick off device. the bat. What are your top forty five favorite MC Hammer songs? <laughs> I literally only know two of them. <laughs> Why are you whispering at me? He's threatening me through whispers right now. That's I only literally know two. That's nobody's business. But my own. Okay, I only literally know two, and everybody knows them. They're too legit to quit. And uh, the other one. What's the other one? Hammer Time. No. That's the cartoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not right either. Hammer Man is the show. Yeah. Wait. See, you got me confused now. Help him out, Chris. I do not recall. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what the hell was it? Um, no, Too Legit the Quit was right. Too legit to quit was right. Pumps in a bump, right? Pumps in a bump. Yeah, yeah that's that the better one. That's from the his best gangster song. rap phase in the '90s when he was trying to compete with the NWA. Yep. And he that was is the better fucking song. MC Hammer. Yes, exactly. He, he rapped MC about Hammer. listening to your parents and going to school. How's he going to compete? <laughs> Listen to your parents or Listen, you'll no, die. Nobody said it was a successful attempt. Yeah, that's he just fair. tried, and God bless him for it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to him, anyway? Uh, MC Hammer famously wasted all, all of his money and went bankrupt. And now he doesn't do anything, I don't think. I think he's a preacher now, isn't he? Is or he? Or he's a minister? Or is he s- preaching the gospel? I think so. That's Run I DMC. I, I think he's completely. also part of this. Well, that might be what he's up to. I yeah. don't know. He's definitely not here for us to interview him. Yeah. Although, yeah. based on how his career turned out, I think we probably had a shot at getting I him. think I have a mm-hmm. dollar somewhere in my house. Like we all know you hours. don't have a dollar at your house. <laughs> Listen, that's what I'm doing this podcast for because you've promised me money. No, no, you can't. You can't prove that anyway. The post dated uh, check is in the mail. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, screw it. I'm okay. already here. So, <laughs> we. I think it's safe to say that the height of MC Hammer's popularity was fall of 1991 because that's when this cartoon came out. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. It sounds about right. Era of the Backstreet Boys and not Backstreet no. Boys. New Kids on the Block. Sorry. So Hammer Man was the cartoon. <laughs> yes. It ran from September to December 1991. 13 episodes were produced by Deke, who, as it turns out, created every single cartoon that we're going to talk about on this podcast. Okay. Good yeah. for them. Well, just about every cartoon. I'm sure there's going to be a couple. Because I don't know if they did the Conan cartoon. They definitely produced a lot of them. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're, they're like... They're like um, what was that company that did all the adaptations for video games for the NES? Oh, God. J. No. Yes, it was. It was LNJ. J- yeah. It was something like that. Or yes. LJN. LJN. LJN with the little rainbow. Awesome. You were. So, anyway, Hammerman. <laughs> Hammerman. Sorry. Was there an MC Hammer video game? No. Why? Yes, there You'll was. You'll have to was wait there? and listen to our video game podcast, Why Is This a Video Game, to hear about the MC Hammer video game. <laughs> that's a great idea, actually. Stop it. We need to get this one off the ground first. Uh, I know, but that's that's the best part. We have all this filler going on, so, so that Hammer we can Man, pad out the time. <laughs> had 13 episodes from September to December 1991. Mm-hmm. Most of them are now lost to the ether. They're considered lost media. The only four that exist are the one we watched, which is the pilot. Uh, I believe one was called Rapolian. One was called Wally's Wishes, and then there's a fourth episode somewhere. But we're here to talk about the first one, because that's presumably the best one. Oh my god. That's, that's certainly <laughs> the case for this show. <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> uh. So let's get into it. What did you guys think about Hammer Man? I wrote down in my notes, terrible. <laughs> that's crazy, because I wrote down in my notes, 
Loved it. <laughs> my, uh, if I had brought my notes with me, which I did write notes. They didn't they, exist. They, they, they did. If you, look in, if you look in the margins, help me please, I want to die is written in there. Um, and I believe it was more just because I'm cringing. I was cringing about the fact that I probably did enjoy that show as a child. How could you hate anything that starts off on such a positive note with what might be the greatest theme song <laughs> of all oh, time? God. That theme song was just... He definitely didn't I, write it. Uh, he yeah. did not write that. Here's the thing. There's no way in hell. The theme song for Hammerman... What, this this happens to be the case for a lot of these cartoon adaptations. They tell the entire exposition in the theme song. Oh my god! But he chose to do it through a rap jingle that didn't rhyme three quarters of the time. Yeah, that's the issue. It's What's performed by MC Hammer. It's not written by MC Hammer. Yeah, hell no. Like him or not, he's a professional musician. Yeah. He would not put pencil to paper and put down. He put on the magical shoes that. He's never uttered that phrase. MC Hammer doesn't voice himself in this cartoon, by the way. No, he doesn't. He, Despite the fact that he's in every episode, you in the bookend segments. You think they would have like, stopped and were like, hey, uh, you got five minutes to record all the dialogue of your character for this episode? I also want to point out that if you look at the animated MC Hammer, uh, he's wearing glasses. Yeah. He's, but MC Hammer doesn't wear glasses. You'd think they would have changed the glasses and the sunglasses when he turns Just because he has contact lenses on when he performs doesn't mean oh he doesn't wear... God glasses in his day-to-day life but back to the theme song it's about a minute and a half long and it tells the story of gramps and jody Ugh. gramps is gramps's granddaughter and gramps is a former superhero he's soul man and he gets his power from the shoes right gramps is getting old <sighs> and he had to give up the fight so they met a guy named stanley <laughs> <laughs> are, are you just gonna? Yeah, are you just gonna do the theme song? <laughs> yeah. I, w- I wish I knew all the words. It was lazy so to Google bad. It. it was so bad. I think it's a great theme song. It and then, is, unironically, we, it's on my workout playlist right now. And you said it was in a minute and a half. It's pretty that, long. It's way longer than it needs to be. I wrote right? that down. I thought the song was just too too long. Well, you, like, there's a lot of exposition. Everything the thing that is, happened with other him shows have that just sh- as long shoes. songs, but they don't drag like that son of a bitch does. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. um but yeah, that that's just so. After the theme song ends, we lead straight into. Wait, wait, before we before we leave the theme song, which I never want to leave. I want to live inside the universe of the theme song. Oh god, because the terrifying. theme song has way better animation than this show. It actually does. It, it's it's a relatively smooth twenty one frames per second, I would say. And then we jump into the cartoon, and uh, no, we're actually not at the cartoon yet. No, it starts off with MC Hammer, Hammer with kids sitting on a green screen bench. Yep, in the green screened Oak Town. Oaktown? I thought it was O-Town. No, it's Oaktown. MC Hammer's from Oakland. Yeah. Oh. Oaktown. He's a super dope homeboy from the Oaktown. I I, I misheard it. You're obviously not as hip as we are. That's fine. (laughs) You're not too legit to quit. Pee in your pants. You're so unlegit. It's cool. Then consider me Miles Davis. Moving on. Um, It goes, yeah, he's sitting on the bed. It's poorly green screened kids doing I thought it was a decent green screen considering it was 1991. It was so so, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Either way, I mean, he's sitting there on the that, animated but... steps with these live action children, and he's talking about who likes graffiti. Yeah, I'm just like, ugh. And he instantly reverses himself when the kids are like, oh, no, we don't like yeah, graffiti. Yeah, everybody said no. He could have ended it right there. All the kids are like, no, we don't like graffiti. He's like, well, it's okay sometimes. He's like, no, it's not. No, <laughs> it's not, really. Ugh. God, like, what are you trying to teach these children? That you're too legit? Too legit to quit. Mm. So in this opening, not only <laughs> not only does he give the kids mixed right morals, he gives the kids mixed morals on the ideas of graffiti. He also spoils the plot of the episode. Yeah. Oh my god. Like oh, well the graffiti comes alive. Oh oh no, I said it. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Like do you have that how, unprofessional, purely unprofessional. And then, and then we mean, cut the commercial break. Oh yeah. Can we talk about these commercials real quick? They were a delightful they, relief. They were. They were probably better than the cartoon itself. I think they were. What was the first? What was the first one? Was, was, it, was it the Cocoa Pebbles? It was yeah. Cocoa Pebbles. Flintstones, Star Trek, Cocoa Pebbles. Oh my God! I flashed right back. The back. best thing about the Cocoa Pebbles commercial was that it had way better animation than oh a professional God. television show. Is this true? It did. Yeah. It really did. It was. It was just. Also, for someone who's so famously bad with his money, you'd think he would have put a little more resources into the show. And that's what I mean. Like, like you know, using himself a- as, like, 
a voice actor for I don't know. Well, no, if he would have been a voice actor, he would have. I'm sure he would have demanded a large paycheck from himself, from Deke. Yeah, the Canadian American Animation Studio. Oh, God. Um, and th- that's the thing. Like, but I-, I wish those people who worked on the theme song animation had worked on the show's animation. But yeah, what was it? Like <laughs> they ran out of funding after the theme song. I keep forgetting they're not. We're not. We're not no. recording what we're actually doing in real life here, so they can't see me moving my arms at two frames every ten seconds. So, um, it's brutal. It is. It's, it's really bad. In the middle of the commercial breaks, it cut to Posse Philosophy. You guys remember that? Oh my, oh my God! Well, don't you know it's bad when parents don't listen to me? Blah 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 blah. I'm thinking, yo, you're a damn kid. Your parents don't have that to was to you. that reminded me a lot of like when they do that on uh, Arthur. Now a word from us kids. I like riding bicycles. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Oh, God, I have this. The last commercial that I wanted to talk about was exercising your teeth. Oh, my God. Oh, that was so disturbing. You realize how old that commercial oh, is? Like, that that's, that's just, one of the, just Just some guy some, saying, chew on some celery and it'll exercise your teeth. Because I, f- I feel like the teeth are the most important muscles in the human body. They aren't muscles. <laughs> well, how can we work them out? <laughs> Exercise your femur. I don't know, but I do know that commercial is about as old as the Do It Best Store commercial. You know, the We Love Saturday Morning Do It Best Store commercial? No. you never seen that? Do you know what I'm talking about, Chris? No. The guy not the 100 on? years old. <laughs> they still play it now. No, they don't. Listen, we need to get back to the cartoon. And not talk because about yeah, it. Because start- it starts with... Okay, the soul sorry. man, and he sings a song to the children about, and it's called Doing the Gramps. Oh, my God. It's the hottest dance craze sweeping America. Since the jitterbug. <laughs> you have to admit, though, it was pretty fucking bad, wasn't it? That was bad. It was really it would, bad. Was he like supposed this, to be James Brown? Yeah. Like, was like, that's supposed no, because be... he makes a James Brown reference. But I think he's supposed, supposed to be like, like a he's caricature of something. Well, he's, 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 he's be... soul man. James Brown. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, but he also name drops James Brown. Because he's talking about himself in the third person. No, yeah, no. It's James Brown. It's James Brown. I think it's James Brown. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Um, <laughs> Turns out that the library's on fire. Yo, how did she know the library's on fire? She's on the other side of town. I think she had something to do with it. Right now. I think she just had a police scanner in her house. Lots of people do She it. wasn't in her house. She was out front dancing. Was she? Yes. Dancing a victory over burning down the library and killing the white man or white woman in the library. But she didn't kill anybody in the library because Hammerman comes to the rescue. Yeah, that dude. After those Three Stooges esque firefighters. Oh my God. I said let her rip, not let her drip. Oh, that was so funny. You know, actually, it no, great. when I was six, I thought it would have thought I probably I thought chuckled. It was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> What's Hammerman's superpower? What's his superpower? All of them. I have no clue. He can do Besides whatever he wants. Besides wearing the shoes. And then musical notes come. And he summons the musical notes. And the musical notes can affect the physical attributes he's, of items. So he's Hip Hop Aquaman. <laughs> Hip Hop Aquaman. <laughs> Hip Aquaman? Hip Aquaman. Hip Aquaman. I like that. I like that too. <laughs> so, so that's his power. He's, uh, he uses the notes to possess the water tower and save the, li- and save the library. Yeah, but he also mm. flew over and got the librarian down off the, off the thing. He did. He did. As she was trying to fight the anthropomorphic fire droplets yeah. that were chasing her on the flag. Oh, oh yeah. Is this a 1930s yeah. Disney cartoon is my question. I wish it was. It would have been animated a lot smoother. So Hammerman jumps down and saves her. <laughs> He's immediately chastised by Gramps for not saving her cool enough. He's like, if a, if Soul Man would have saved her, he would have used a little more pizzazz. It's I would have like, been like, bitch, if Soul, if Soul Man were here, he could have done it. But sorry, guess what? I, was, I was busy saving her life. I didn't think about my dance moves at that point. Yeah, I know, right? What an ungrateful douchebag. <laughs> well, I'm an old man, and everything makes me angry. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like, no. Can we talk about the like the Greek chorus that's a part of this cartoon? Oh, I don't understand the two fly girls that His just keep showing up. Yeah. Singers, I, I love that. I thought that was great. Uh, do they show up through the entire series? Is my question. Yeah, I don't remember they do. They show up in, uh, in the other episodes too. They they jump in and out. And they're like, hey. Yeah, but at least you know. I, I don't know. I liked I liked the uh, Greek goddess chorus thing. I liked it. From no, I liked it in Hercules. I not so much in this. Well, I liked it in this. There were two '90s fly girls. It was like the start of uh, 
do the right thing. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, yeah. So after the daring uh, library rescue, it cuts to Stanley in his street in his streetwear. Yeah, and uh, mm. he's at the community center. Yes, he is. Where you know children wouldn't eat if they weren't open. Yeah, it does. It, does, it provides a very good service. It feeds the children of the Oak well, Town. We're also introduced to the rest of his crew. You guys oh. remember that? Oh my God. Yep. The guy with the red hair and the keyboard. Ludwig. Ludwig. Oh. <laughs> oh. And then there was the girl. Yeah. Who, yeah. Who was the guy with the tuba? Yeah, he was just. He was just. So, he was like. Yeah, his the name moose. was. Uh, no, it was. Um, I can't remember what his name was. No, but his role was to just be the dumb guy of the group. Uh, oh, where's the tuba? Use the tuba. I'm a douchebag. Yeah, no. <laughs> was, yeah. He had like friggin' nori weed hair. Those were his exact words on the show too. What kind of kids program do we watch? Mm-hmm. It, was it was Canadian. It was partially Canadian. Canadian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that it explains funny. the animation. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna keep ragging on the animation yeah. through the entire thing because it's that like people need if they if all four people who listen to this podcast need to go and watch Hammer Time, Hammer Man. Sorry, all four people who watch this need to go on YouTube. I like and watch that you're Hammer shooting Man. for the stars. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Every every episode that's available is on YouTube. Episode one is the only one that's pure though. Yeah. Episodes the second and third episode are annotated over by somebody who was making jokes over the whole thing. It's called Hammerman the Annotated Series. I saw it. It wasn't that funny. And then the fourth episode online is overdubbed in Polish. So Oh well, now I wanna nice. watch that. The fourth you episode watched that one. <laughs> is awesome because spoiler alert, Hammerman gets kidnapped and brainwashed by the trio of villains in this show. And uh it's all because the dog stole his shoes. See, okay, so here's the thing. I don't it, want to jump around. But at the end of the episode, at, at the end of every episode, Hammerman does like a GI Joe PSA thing. And at the end of that episode, he's like, "Sometimes pets don't behave, and we got to be nice to our pets." It's like, "Thanks, MC Hammer." Meanwhile, Bob Barker asks us to cut the <laughs> I'm balls stop off. Stop drowning my dogs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only young Michael Vick had watched Hammer Man. <laughs> so much good. So much good have been spared. I'm so glad we're doing current event jokes right now. <laughs> yes, those 2007 <laughs> current events. <laughs> when did we record this? So we're at the community oh, center, and Jody is showing off her skills as an artist. Remember that that awesome painting she did of a flame. Yeah, let me put mm. quotations up for you there, buddy. There you go. And then uh, the Mario Brothers p- plumbing system that they have installed in the place. Yeah, the pipe just kind of explodes. I've never had a pipe just randomly explode, and I'm pretty sure nobody was shivering, so it wasn't the middle of winter. And right? Jody, that fucking... <laughs> Spoiled that little... That selfish brat. She's like, look at my art. Don't fix the, wa- the people leaking People were drowning. Pipe. Did you see how high that water was? If that place had a basement, those people are fucking dead. Yeah, so Jody's all upset because uh, because nobody wants to look at her art. I think I think the subtext of this of this episode is support the arts because look what happens to Jody. Look what happened to a certain German fellow who was also told his, told his art was no good. I mean, these things happen. We got to support the arts. Are you saying that pretty soon Jody's gonna be in front of a podium yelling and shaking her fist? And- she definitely brought giant monsters to life. No, 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 no. The super villain in this episode, and I use that term very loosely. Hey, he was a super villain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This. He, this. We're getting. We're getting ahead. Of Let's ourselves. not reveal we're the name. Ahead, we're getting ahead of just ourselves. yet because the name makes this entire podcast worth worth listening to. You know, let's just call him the villain the entire time, and then at the very end, we'll say what his name was. I'm not going to be able to uh, to resist. I'm not going to be able to resist myself. Tell, you have to say his name. It's amazing because it is terrible. Can we say it backwards? I could show. barely say it forward. <laughs> I, I didn't even hear it when I listened to it. I wrote down some. I just said mobster. I couldn't hear what the hell. You didn't hear said. his name. I didn't hear. His you name don't know his name to this day. Till the, till oh my guy said it when we got here. Oh, oh it's like, Marmeister. Uh, what kind of name is that? His evil scheme is to take all the all the graffiti around Oaktown and turn it alive with his magical spray. And he's gonna do. He's gonna use that those monsters to take over the to take over Oaktown. Yeah, what was what, what was the name of his lackey? Lackey. It was lackey. Yeah, his lackey's lackey name was lackey. lackey. Yeah, who made minimum wage? Yeah, 
which back in 91 was like $1.75 an hour. <laughs> but that would buy you a shiny new car. <laughs> so Jody so Jody runs off after she's shunned for her artwork. You know, even though everybody was drowning the death. That's fine. And she runs into some little degenerate kid spray painting the wall. With Joker. Yes. That was his name. That was his Joker. name. Joker. Yeah. It was his handle. Which, did anybody else catch up on this? The guy's name was Joker, the redheaded kid. And oddly enough, the villain in this show was dressed like the Joker. Well, like was cross he, between he the Joker and the Scarecrow. He had a wizard's hat. Yeah, yeah. He looked like... A witch. A very badly drawn Halloween witch. That's what he looked like. And the Joker. Okay. He I'll take like that. He, he looked yeah. like the Joker from Batman. Okay. The animated series. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the good Joker, you mean Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah, that one. He definitely didn't look like Jack Nicholson. Yeah. No. He didn't have a beer in his hand. So Joe... <laughs> So Joker teaches Jody the fine art of graffito tagging. Yeah. And uh, you know what? For her first time, she's able to recreate that painting of a fire pretty well. I want to point out, she knew the library was on fire without being there, and all of a sudden she's painting pictures of fire. I think we got a fire bug on our hands. I'm more you impressed. You think she's a pyromaniac? Yeah. She she tried. She worked very hard on the painting in the community center. She was able to recreate it super quick. It was a picture of fire. She's it's a great three artist. Three effing colors. She's a great artist. And you like she only how I used go from two colors. I'm myself to just actually outright say fuck. <laughs> I think she only used two colors. What the H, man? <laughs> yeah, she used two old colors. I, how long does it, I could draw fire right now. So she's peer pressure no, into the graffiti. Yeah. And I, I have in my notes Batman word actions. Did you guys see those? Oh, yeah. Every time yeah. something would happen, there'd be like oh, a yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. 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 like it would show up. But uh, like, I'm sorry, but it, it's you don't need to do that when you only have, like, when you only paid for three cells animation. But it was like they weren't even, it wasn't even during a fight. It was just like, Sweet. grab this. And like when he, when she sprayed on the can, it did it too. And it said spray yeah. or something like that. And like, yeah. and, and sploosh and things like that. And I was just like, I'm like, that's not even. Kapow. Yeah. Yeah. So then we're finally introduced to the villain, DeFacely Marmeister. DeFacely Marmeister. Hello, kids. Yeah. He sounded like the Joker, too. He is is a Joker ripoff. This guy was not good enough to be on Captain Planet, and that's how he ended up on this show. (laughs) Yeah. I don't even think he was good enough to be a monster of the week on Scooby-Doo. He's not even good enough to be on the Toxic Crusaders, which was already a a step down from Captain Planet. You shut your whore mouth right now. Yeah, so his plan is to encourage all the little kids to tag up Oaktown, and then he's gonna he's gonna bring it to life and use the monsters to do his evil bidding. Which I think is it's genius. Just steal everything. I think it's genius. It's literally just steal everything. Like, did you notice the armored car? What was the armored car shape like? What was the armored car shape like? What was the armored car shape like? A fucking piggy bank. Was it? Yes. And then there was uh, a store. I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of earlier where he's got the truck and he's like, I have all of Oak Town's money in this one yeah. box truck. Yeah, right? It's like, oh, Oak Town, going through some hard times? <laughs> well, it's Oakland. I uh, I just want to jump back to Stanley at the community center. Okay, sure. He's like, oh, it's, the community center is flooding. How do we get this water out? Use Let it. me use my one bucket. Yeah. He's trying to bail it out like it's a fishing boat. He's got one bucket. <laughs> And he's pushing the water out the window. Just open the door. Yeah. Unless the doors are, like, raised up off the floor. Why is the community center watertight? Because it's an evacuation point, probably, for when the Oakland River floods. Oakland's on a bay. I've never been, so. Yeah, uh, we cut back to DeFacely Marmeister and his evil plan. He definitely says at some point, I love being a bad guy. Yes, he does. So he's, he's a bad guy open for being a bad guy's sake. Though. Which you have to appreciate. Well, at least there's no deus ex machina in this cartoon to stop him. Like a pair of magical shoes or something. That talk. Oh, can we talk about the magical shoes? I think we need to talk about the magical Why shoes. Why do they talk? Why is that necessary? Why do they sound like this? Yeah. These are magical soul shoes. You think they, they would sound like, like the bro, dorkiest dorks. Like you would think they would have like soul voices, like like a little James Brown and a little like Rick James or something. I'm left shoe, bitch. You know? <laughs> yeah, they, they tried to turn the shoes into like the comic relief. Like 
Could into we, the comic relief. Wasn't there enough comic fucking relief? Fucking Scooby Doo character with the band people and the other guy. Like, was there not enough yeah. comic relief in the show for that? Like, did we need a pair of shoes that talk too? No. I think they just threw everything at the wall and see what would, what stuck. Yeah, and they're like, well, well, we need talking faces. shoes because you know what? My shoes talk to me too. Yeah. It's not enough that the, the shoes. No, give they you wrote random powers. ideas yeah. and random objects, and they only the one. Unfortunately, they wrote all the ideas for this show on turds, so therefore they did. They'll stick to the wall. <laughs> uh, listen, wow. I thought there was some good setups and payoffs in this show. I thought the script Where? was pretty tight. What? The script was pretty tight. He didn't watch the same show as us. I watched I, the show. I, I, well, I think he watched the show, inebriated it. So we did, we watched it sober. Yeah, so we were pretty. Yeah, you were we, drunk. That's I not cannot fair. confirm or deny. So look, everything's better when you're a little, you know, inebriated. Look well, at this been podcast. A few years. <laughs> so eventually, all the monsters are running wild in Oaktown, and somebody goes to call nine one one. You remember what happened? He didn't have money to dial nine one one. Like, well, yeah, you're right. He got rejected. No, no, he could dial nine one one, but the thing hung up on him. Yeah, because he didn't have the money. What what kind of impoverished? You terrible! Pay your all the money, dime. all the money in this town fits in a box truck. You have to pay to dial nine one one. Like this is third world Oak Town. <laughs> it, it is. Have you ever been? To, have you ever seen pictures of Oakland? It's the third world. I don't mean that anybody who lives out in Oakland. Yes, I do. I don't care about you. <laughs> anyway, I'm in Pennsylvania. Fight me. <laughs> so eventually, it gets to the point where Hammerman has been kidnapped. Yeah, and he got well, no, spray no, painted no. to the wall. No, Stanley was Stanley. Stanley was kidnapped. Yeah, and he loses his shoes. And he didn't shoes. have his magical shoes because he got his bag mixed up with Ludwig's. Yeah. Because everybody has the same duffel bag. That's yes. right. And obviously a bag with one sandwich in it weighs the exact same as a bag with two shoes in it. Listen, I just wanted one cutaway where Ludwig puts on the shoes and becomes Beethoven Man. <laughs> Oh, that would have been amazing. I think that show would have been a little bit better. That should have been that, that should have been, been the resolution. Show. Yeah. Stanley is forever shunned for Beethoven man who for Beethoven man who came in and literally just German the guy's ass yeah. to death. So Stanley's kidnapped and uh the Facely Marmeister is spray painting him. I don't want to get racial, but he spray paints him white. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well he's melting him with spray paint. That's actually pretty gruesome. That's hardcore. And then uh, as he's spray painting Stanley, he, he chimes in, I love being bad. Yeah. He's very open about it, which yes. I can appreciate. You got to own it. He owns his craft. Yeah, meanwhile, all the, all the graffiti that the kids have painted on these walls has been brought to life also by the same magic spray. Yeah. So this magic spray is yet another deus, us, deus ex machina in, on the show. It's just a really handy spray. It's a Swiss Army spray. It's, yeah, much like he has sw- with the Swiss Army shoes. There's another line that I wanted to uh, that I wrote down because I thought it was great. It's got to be DeFacely. One picture is worth a thousand nerds. Yes, that is DeFacely. I love that. This guy's this guy's a gem. He could, he could have made it on Captain Planet in my book. I so, loved it. After that, um, all the monsters are in town, like tearing shit up, um, and then Jody and Gramps go looking for. Stanley, who has started singing ter- Gramps' song in the basement. See, I did watch the episode. <laughs> Believe me. An hour before we started recording. That's okay. No, I watched it once before, then I watched it again today. Actually, I watched it about halfway through today. Well, what I'm curious about is, at that point, DeFacely already has all of Oaktown's money. Why didn't he just leave? Yeah. We're done yeah. here. Yeah. He has Time to go this, to San Francisco. He has a strange connection to Oaktown. He has to stay. He doesn't love it. He doesn't love it, but he can't leave it. It's like me and Hazleton. <laughs> it's like a bad relationship. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and reference my ex-wife. Oh my <laughs> or my roommate. Or my last three girlfriends. Or me and any women. Oh, I just made myself sad. Anyway, <laughs> how does Stanley break out of the spray paint? Uh, he doesn't. They have they uh, Gramps and Jody find him from his terrible singing, and she sprays him with the reconstitution spray, and then he gets loose. Okay. They never actually show him getting loose from the wall, so I'm going to assume the reconstitution spray disables or th- like opens or melts shackles. Well, the the spray paint doesn't hold up well because we we find out it's water based. Because yeah. The water mm-hmm. tower is what saves the day. Again. Call back. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It was well written. It's, no, it's a it tight wasn't. script. It's a tight script. It wasn't. Oh, my God. 
I also have written down in my notes bat songnal. What? Bat songnal. Like somebody signaled. That. Maybe that's when he was singing Do the Gramps. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Well, if they couldn't find Stanley, why didn't they look for the shoes and just have Gramps do it? I know he's well, getting They couldn't old. find the shoes. The shoes were gone. They assumed that the shoes were with Stanley. Oh, yeah, Ludwig had them. Yeah. And he almost ate them. The sandwich. He was hungry. Yeah. I am very hungry. Apparently, I like food because I have a shock of red hair and a guitar. <laughs> there's, a, there's also a moment where one of the graffiti the monsters, back. one of the graffiti monsters, eats a sandwich. Yeah, he eats his sand- Ludwig yeah. sandwich after Stanley brings back the b- duffel bag. Yeah. That's Ludwig's lunch. And the graffiti has no digestive system. He has no need for food. He's just being a jerk. And he got paint all over that sandwich. You can see it. He's like, ew. And he's looking at it, stripping off the sandwich. Once again, told you I watched the actual show. We believe you now, Tim. Okay. Halfway through, we believe you now. Talk about, it's about I'm not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother was convinced. You have to, how talk. about this? You have to draw it better, and then we'll be convinced. Really? I thought you were guys going to give me a difficult challenge. Oh. Is, the, is the highlight of the episode when... I use my ass cheeks for this? When, when Hammerman sure. busts out and you can't touch this? Oh, my God. So, yes. Okay, so that, that I will admit, when you can't touch this, start playing. I got excited. I was like, oh my god, you can't touch this. It was great. I, I was like, dancing and shit. He was saving the day with, with the power of rhyme. Yeah. So, my, my, my th- that begs the question, does MC Hammer exist in universe? Well, I believe Stan- Hammer Man was singing it. So I don't think ha- MC Hammer exists. Well, he created the music of MC Hammer in that universe because of, you know. So why doesn't, if he has all these songs, why doesn't, he just record them, release them as hit singles, and use that money to save the, the community center. Well, because he doesn't have the power to hammer man then. He'll put the shoes on. He'll but put the, he can totally get the shoes on. Saving something. He can yeah, totally the, put the shoes on. Yeah, the shoes only save people. The yeah. shoes can't make a career. Only for saving. Where's that rule? Uh, uh, we're just going to go ahead it's and In the guess. script, that 19 pages. <laughs> is it written on the tongue next to the size? Yeah. It's right under the notes for me asking. How convenient is it that Gramps and Stanley have the same shoe size? Yeah, right. Was that, was that the determining factor in who could carry on the mantle of. I mean, if Gramps was a seven and a half extra wide, I would have been set. I would have been the greatest. <laughs> I would have been the, the whatever man. <laughs> I would have become the painkiller. The painkiller. Yes. Painkiller man. Pain, you would pain. become grungy heavy metal man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that means I could summon like bats and fire and Ozzy Osbourne. No, it would just be music notes, but they'd be a lot, be cool. a lot more jagged. Yeah, they'd mm. be like they'd, they'd look like Gibson flying V's and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we get a graffiti rainbow. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that was happens? so. Yeah, is that permanent? The, is that permanent? No, okay. the pain is not permanent because it's water based. Well, that's fair. So one day it'll rain and the rainbow will be gone. Then you'll get a real rainbow. Why why are the kids using water-based paint to paint outside? Well, I think the problem is the people who created the show have no concept of what mineral spirits are and how to actually remove paint. It's it's a fair point. The animators who painted the cells are probably going, "What the fuck is this all about?" You know? There's no way the animators who are painting the cells bothered to care about what they were actually doing. Well, they doing. were too busy. There was, there was first of all, there was definitely only one guy he and he did it in an really afternoon. He was hungry for that bowl of rice that they were going to give him when they let him out of the basement. Yeah. Okay. He would have. He would have eaten that painted on sandwich. I'm sure if we look at the freaking credits, the name might be Southeast Asian. Just saying. I mean, I'm not trying to be a racist here or anything. You write down a time stamp so you could remove that. <laughs> <laughs> Are we not going to ac- accidentally uh, 1422, be Tim makes racist comment. Uh, at 1422, Tim is off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, not again. <laughs> so who who really ends up saving the day? Because you could argue Hammer Man, but the real hero here was the graffiti cop. Yeah, the real Jody guy. spray paints a cop and makes it come to life. Hmm. But that teaches a lesson at the end that, hey, graffiti's okay as long as you gra- paint cops. Yeah. But also... What's the jurisdiction of the graffiti cop? Well, the guy's name was. Um, what was his name? Whose name? The uh, bad guy? Yeah. The Facely Marmeister. The Facely Marmeister. It's going to be the name of my fantasy football team. <laughs> 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 We're like pub trivia. Like our moment of Zen at the end is all of us saying the Facely Marmeister together because I, I just I think that's delightful. The good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> so. Anyway. <laughs> 
So, so everybody apologizes to Jody for not paying attention to her when they were trying to save the community center, yeah. which was the bastion of the community. All the kids went there to eat, but sorry we didn't pay attention to you, Jody. We were trying to make sure kids ate. Yeah, so. sorry, sorry, you you weren't the most important thing on our minds. Right. Moral of the story is Jody's petty as fuck. And she's a spoiled little bitch. Now, 13 episodes, you said. There's 13 episodes of this. The fact that they, you know, it ran until December of 1991 and was canceled, canceled, right? Therefore, it was probably canceled the week of my birthday. Therefore, that was probably the greatest birthday present I've ever received in my life. <laughs> it probably just <laughs> ran out of funding. <laughs> because it was definitely on a shoestring Once again, budget. Yeah. still going to keep with the greatest birthday present of my life. This Happy show, birthday, too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. But at at the end of the episode, after the bad guys defeated, they all go off to clean the graffiti. But isn't it already gone? Yeah, what, it's already off the, the walls. Yeah. Well, the rest of the graffiti. They no, didn't no, get no, all yeah, the I, I'm pretty sure Mar- the Facely Marmeister probably resurrected all of it. Because yeah. there was a there was a giant monster Joker tag too. That turned into yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. it was, it was all. a dinosaur or whatever. So, yeah. so we're gonna go clean the graffiti up. Oh look, there's no graffiti. Already done. Let's let's all go smoke pot in the woods. You know, I mean. That's no, they didn't go smoke pot in the woods. There's no woods in Oakland. It's the Bay. Let's all go <laughs> eat mushrooms down by the Bay. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's all go fishing. Did you not pay attention to the MC Hammer PSA at, at the, the end, end of it? Yeah, I might not have made it that far. <laughs> I might have actually not watched the PSA. I was like, I saw credits and I was so ecstatic. The I PSA just YouTube right there. <laughs> was my favorite part of the episode. Hey, kids, this is MC Hammer. And I'm just letting you know, graffiti's okay sometimes, but it's got to be on your own property. Don't graffiti other people's property. That's right, Can't kids. Can't touch that. And that's the end of the episode. Go outside your parents' house <laughs> and then spray paint up all the walls on your own house. Yeah, you own it. So draw all over your walls with <laughs> yeah, permanent Yeah, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. Everybody else needs to use a piece of paper, as MC Hammer did say. I did see it, actually. Now I remember. Because as soon as you said that. Yeah. Thought, yeah. Oh, you fine, Rob, put it down on a piece of paper. It's like, well, some kids can't afford paper because the community center got flooded and they have nowhere to go to make art. It's not graffiti if it's on a piece of paper. Yeah. It's art if it's on paper. So none of you guys watched the other episodes that were available. Oh hell no! I tapped out after this one. Yeah, this that was, was enough. So I you watched got... the MC Hammer music videos instead. They're a lot better. Yeah. So you guys don't don't know the story of Rapolian? Rapolian was really short, and the entire point of that episode was not to make fun of short people. Listen, the name of the episode is Rapolian. I want you guys to give me in one sentence what you think the episode is about. I just gave you that. What do you think, Chris? I don't recall. So here's the condensed version, no pun intended, of Rapolian, <laughs> the second episode of Hammerman. Rapolian is a small man who has robot legs to make him seem taller, and then through some way, he shrinks down the entire city of Oaktown with the help of a scientist. Oh, the scientist, and yes. And then the lesson at the end is to not make fun of people who are different. This is episode two. <laughs> What the fuck? It's Hold a great on. show. What? Is the second episode better than the first episode? This is me banging my head off of the Well, to be fair, I only skimmed the other episodes, but I, I think it could have been. Oh, my God. And then there's an episode where they try to steal all the shoes. The bad guy in that one, instead of laughing evilly... He says, chortle, chortle, chortle. No, you guys no. missed out on gems. Oh, you guys missed no. out on gems. <laughs> this is... Ow, my soul. Why? The Facely Marmeister comes back. He's a part of this evil coalition of, of bad guys. It's great. So they w- waited a whole four episodes before they had... What I'm saying is the continuity voice. in Hammerman is right up there with Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> that other nonsense. Shut your whore mouth. But yeah, that's Hammerman in a nutshell. I can't believe you guys didn't like it. I loved it. I thought it was muff cabbage. Thank yeah, you very much. it wasn't good. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It wasn't the so wh- so so. Answer me this then: Why is it a cartoon? Money. 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 Success. I mean, bank actually, on to be bank fair, on that MC we've Hammer train. The entire series of podcasts we're gonna do by saying that. So let's put it this way: it was it, it was made into a cartoon. Yes, of course, for money, but because MC Hammer was at the peak of his, peak of his of his popularity, and honestly, the producers at Deke 
<laughs> were a bunch of deeks who thought they could make, a, who thought they could use oh, him in a, in a blatant crash, ca- ca- crash, crash, grab. I think MC Hammer wanted to spread his message of joy to all the children, which is why he has the PSAs at the end of every episode. He knew they couldn't keep buying his albums forever because he was going to take that hard gangsta lean. So he wanted a show to teach kids, hey, don't make fun of people, don't graffiti, be nice to pets, all that kind of stuff. I wish I could live in your world. (laughs) I think that's why. (laughs) I I just want to go inside your head for like one minute, like just just to see what it's like. So so as as a continuation of that Hammerman, does it deserve to be a cartoon? No. No. What? No. Two no's. He, he should have kept his day job. Yeah, he really should have. Of working at the community center? Yes. They, no. Now, what Doing they could that. have done was they probably could have condensed this down into a one, two-hour movie, the entire series into a two-hour movie, made it live action, made MC Hammer actually play MC Hammer, or Stanley and Hammerman, and we probably would have gotten one of those, one of those fond, <laughs> fever dream memory movies that we, that we all have he from the 90s. He could have did this just as a music video for one of his songs. Yeah. Because it was close enough for the Too Legit to Quit video. It was almost like that. He could have just made a song about how graffiti is sometimes bad. Like, he could have done an entire album yeah. for kids. Like, he could have done an NC I Hammer. I feel like t- most of his albums were entirely for kids. You shut your Except for Pumps at a Bump. Pumps at a Bump. Pumps at a Bump. Pumps 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 a bump. bump. <laughs> oh, God. So, no, it didn't deserve to be a cartoon. It really didn't. There was There's much better ideas how he could have gotten his message across and actually probably made money. Like I said, a live-action MC Hammer movie for kids would have been, like, Printing money. Been, it would have yeah. been a license. It would have been a license to print money. I disagree. I think I thought it was great. So you, Tim, you were alive during this decade. Yes, I was. Well, so are you. Well, I was only four. Did you have the MC Hammer doll? The look of shame on my face says it all. Yes, I did. I had MC Hammer doll. I had Stretch Armstrong. I had Pound Puppies. I had all of this crap. Was the MC Hammer doll a pull string type of deal? I th- it might have been. I think, I think I it was. I it's never been had so it. long. I'd have to dig through boxes. If I could find it in my parents' basement, tell you what, I'll let you play with it. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> but um, was it like the same scale as the Pee Wee Herman doll? Yeah, I think so. It was just like That's awesome. Like I a Barbie doll. Those wrestling buddies. Had... Remember those wrestling buddy pillows that were like Hulk Hogan and all that? And it was just the pillow. Yeah. 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 yeah no, oh, um, we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. That's... Shadowing. <laughs> oh God! Future episodes. Yeah, so n- that's what I mean. Like it, it's it, from from mer- I did have one. Um, I do remember this cartoon. It's just once again, I until you said something about it. Until you said something about it, Joe, a few weeks ago when we were when we were when we were still in the planning stages, which technically I guess we're still in the planning stages now because we aren't going to get this nailed down for another few episodes. Oh, you fuck. Anyway. Um, I thought that maybe it was, a, like I said, a fever dream from when I was a kid. Well, yeah, because who, who's going to remember something that existed for three months when they were seven years old? So That's absolutely fair. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it's, yeah. I mean, Joe, how, how far off were you from being born at this point in 1991? Um, in September of 1991, I was 13 months away from being born. Holy crap, you were a baby. <laughs> I wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't around for half the shit we're going to be talking about. I know, that's the thing, like, you... N- well, oh that's that's the exciting thing. I'm going to be seeing it through fresh eyes. So, like, we got two Generation Ys and a Millennial here. I reject that label. Yeah, well, you are. He's a Millennial. <laughs> I mean, meanwhile, you're out, you are on the ass end of it, of course. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you're at the very because Reagan was still in office when you were born, right? Yeah, eighty-eight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was only at the end of his first term. So, you know, Reagan's kids we were the weird ones. Um, I was a Bush baby. Yeah, you were a Bush baby. No, you weren't. The first one. The first one. What year were you born? 92. No. October. It was before the election. So, yeah. He's a Bush baby. Bush baby. You're a tail end of Bush. You're almost a Clinton baby. Yeah. Well, I was raised in the Clinton years, so. I mean, there were thousands of Clinton babies on a certain blue dress, but let's not get into that. (laughs) I think we've said all we need to say (laughs) about Hammerman and the MC Hammer cartoon. Uh, I think so, I thought it was great. Some people might have slightly varying opinions, <laughs> slightly. but the only one that matters is mine. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we've got to say about the Hammerman cartoon. And before we go with this per- first episode, we'd like to end every episode with our own pitch for our own animated adaptations that could have fit in during this time in the 70s, 80s, or 90s with their cheaply produced animation and recycled plots. So uh, who wants to go first? Go ahead, Chris. I, I want to go last. You want to go guys, last? Yeah, you guys go. Um, well, I actually suggested it earlier in the show, which was The Adventures of the Good, the Bad, the Ugly, and Friends. 
think that would make a make an excellent 1970s poorly animated cartoon with a movie ca- with a with a movie star a week. Sort of like sort of like Gunsmoke the animated series or something. In a way, but only with the man with no name, of course. Well, my idea was Night Court in Space. Yep. yep. We join the whole crew. They travel around the galaxy, solving interle- interstellar laws mm. and uh, getting into getting into trouble. Yeah, of course. As only the Night Court gang could. Yeah. What do you got, Chris? My pitch. Are you guys familiar with the movie Mac and Me? Yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Is I it watched just an animated it. Series of the kid in the wheelchair going off the cliff. <laughs> Did you? I want to. I want to propose this. But I want to propose this because I watched this movie two weeks ago, and it is. Why did you watch this movie two weeks ago? Because it came out on Blu-ray and I bought it, and it is the most obscure movie, totally ET ripoff of all time. It was funded by, sponsored by, uh, Coke and McDonald's, at the same time. Yeah. The, The alien in it, instead of liking Reese's. Uh, pieces like E.T. does, like Skittles. Instead, there's a kid in a wheelchair in it who falls off a cliff, like Tim said. And Paul Rudd showed us. Did you guys know there's a Japanese version of the ending of that movie where the kid gets shot? Um, There's an alternate Japanese take of Mac and Me. Stop right now, because I have, oddly enough, I think I might know exactly... um, Exactly what you're talking about. Let me go to my. Well, the question with that is, where does Mac and Me fit into the McDonald Land universe? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know, but there is a dance scene that all takes place at McDonald's in that movie, which is fantastic. Remember that? That was fantastic. So my pitch would have been two two things you could have did: just follow the aliens, the family of aliens in the movie, have an animated show just about the aliens. They drive cross country. I want an ET cameo. E.T. cameo. One elf in, cameo. In the background. They have to be yeah, in the background. Yeah, like, in the background. The they can't be... Yeah. yeah. Just what? little waves as the alien family from Mac and Manuel goes by. The other version I had was the paraplegic kid in that movie f- is still friends with Mac, and he keeps dying at the end of every episode, like <laughs> Kenny from South Park. <laughs> oh, my God. And the like, aliens have to resurrect him at the end of the episode, and by the end of the series... The aliens get sick and tired of him dying all the time and them resurrecting his ass. They say, fuck you. We're done. We're going back to our home planet. Wow. Right, well, That's re- the harsh version. I'm ready to call up Hanna-Barbera and get that, get that rolling, rolling right yeah. now. Is Hanna-Barbera still in business? I think that's a great idea. They're owned by somebody. Yeah. Hanna and Barbera. No. Both <laughs> those people are dead. So I think that's all we got for the first episode of the Why Is This a Cartoon Cast. Thanks for checking it out. Next week, we'll definitely have something different. Yeah. But for now, I'm Joey. I'm Tim. I'm Chris. See you later, guys. Mm.